Hello and welcome back to Utility Sports once again. We have another trade to kind of analyze here. We have Steven Adams going to the Pelicans and we have a first round pick going back to the Thunder. Sheldon, kind of break it down for, for everybody and kind of give your analysis on it. Yeah, so this pick is actually uh, a 2023 first round pick that's lottery protected coming from the Denver Nuggets uh, via the New Orleans Pelicans. Obviously a lot to kind of follow with there. Uh, that is coming from the trade that let the Denver Nuggets go back into the first round to grab RJ Hampton on draft night. So that pick going from New Orleans um, obviously is quite interesting because that comes from the Drew Holiday trade from Milwaukee. So a lot of moving parts right there. Uh, but then at that point here, uh, the obviously the Pelicans are acquiring Steven Adams, a center who is on a max contract at this point, I believe has two years left on his deal uh, there. And in, in turn, the Oklahoma City Thunder are acquiring not only that 2023 lottery protected first, but also two additional second rounders for Steven Adams. And now you're looking at the Oklahoma City Thunder with, I believe, 18 first round picks over the next seven years. Uh, obviously quite interesting because an NBA roster can only have 15 players. So, you know, they're going to have a lot of chances to swing and miss um, and probably will do a lot of missing. Uh, in my opinion, there's uh, Sam Presti doesn't have the best draft history outside the top 10, but I think Pokusevsky was a good place to start this year. And, you know, if with a focus on that, maybe he can kind of turn around uh, some of the team's issues moving forward. Obviously, they still have Shea Gilgis Alexander, something to watch. And when you're looking at it from the Pelicans' point of view, uh, obviously, you bring in Steven Adams, a, a center who's, you know, not going to be a flashy guy. He's not going to go out and get statistics. He's, you know, more of a, a traditional 9.9 .9 rebound kind of center. But he's going to, you know, do the dirty work as a screener. He's going to, you know, box out hard on the glass. And that's something that's going to be valuable next to Zion Williamson, someone who's super athletic and can go up and grab those rebounds. You're going to take a little bit of the physical um, presence off of Zion Williamson because Steven Adams is going to commend bodies around the rim. Uh, I believe there's been a couple of years where he averages over two and a half offensive rebounds a game. Uh, so there's some value there for the New Orleans Pelicans. I kind of question the fifth in terms of what their offensive – like structural look like, you know, I think that Zion Williamson's a guy who needs to uh, be used in the pick and roll as a screener. And I think he's a guy who you obviously want to clean the paint out for him a little bit. Uh, and, and Steven Adams doesn't do either of those things. Steven Adams is going to be used as a screen man often. And he's also going to, you know, eat up quite a bit of that paint as uh, a dunker spot sitter when he doesn't have the ball and isn't involved in the pick and roll. Uh, so there's a, quite a bit to monitor there for them. But uh, it's pretty clear that the Pelicans – Despite trading Drew Holiday, want to stay competitive. They want to put a, a competitive team around Zion Williamson. And Steven Adams is going to help them do that. You're looking at a lineup now with Lonzo Ball. Obviously, uh, they got Nikhil Alexander-Walker off the bench. They added Kyra Lewis um, off the bench early in his career. Uh, you're also still looking at J.J. Redick, Josh Hart on the wings with Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson. And now uh, Steven Adams with Jackson Hayes, their first-round pick last year, uh, coming off the bench behind him. So you're looking at, again, a pretty deep uh, roster, even though they lost Derek Favors to the Utah Jazz. And they're going to be a team that, you know, they want to they wanna win some games. Um, and they've also done a good job accruing assets. They got a, a, an absolute haul for Drew Holiday, uh, something that's really, you know, worth monitoring long-term is they're going to have a lot of chances possibly to put some good players around Zion Williamson, and they're not going to go in the direction of, of fully tanking, and they want to, you know, nece not necessarily make the playoffs, even though I think that is the goal. I don't think that they will, but I think they want to be right around that playoff hunt, and Stephen Adams is going to help them do that. So you said you weren't a big fan of the fit with Stephen Adams uh, going to the Pelicans here, and you're not a big fan of Oklahoma City once again acquiring another first-round pick because there's a lot of swing and miss potential with Sam Presti. Um, obviously, just getting a first-round asset is great, but it's kind of becoming to the point where you got to start packaging those and getting you know better quality assets um, that you can. So kind of give a grade for both teams uh, initially here. Uh, first reaction. Yeah, for the Pelicans here, I'm going to give them a B grade. I think that Steven Adams is definitely a big improvement over Jackson Hayes at the center position. And if that's the route that they want to go with Stan Van Gundy and having, you know, a, a screening center, someone who's going to eat the lane, uh, he's going to do a much better job than Jackson Hayes will. And, and they're going to be more competitive from that. So that's why they get a B. It's not an A grade because I don't love the fit uh, myself. I think that even if that's what Stan Van Gundy wanted to do as new head coach there, I think that there's better options. I think they should have prioritized shooting a little bit more. Um, in free agency, I think that they should have looked for, you know, a wing or a bigger player like D Davis Bertans, uh, possibly if they wanted to, you know, really go big and, and use their max money on him rather than Steven Adams. I think that would have made some sense. 
uh, especially next to Zion, use Zion as that kind of small ball five. But overall, I don't think it's a, an absolute terrible deal. They gave up a, a pick that's three years away yet at this point, and is still lottery protected. So it's not a, an outstanding asset, and it's from Denver. So you're looking at a pick that you know is probably going to be in the 20s, um, probably mid to low 20s. Not something great for them. And uh, from the Oklahoma City perspective, I'm going to give this trade a C. I think that Stephen Adams is a player they could have moved in the past for probably a current year first round pick. Those two seconds really don't move the needle for me in this trade. I, and like I said, that Denver selection is not going to be that uh, valuable, in my opinion. I think that's an okay asset. And like you said, Austin, I think that's something they're going to have to look to package. And at this point, Sam Presti doesn't really seem to be, you know, kind of entertaining those trade offers at all. And I think he's just trying to stockpile a whole bunch of selections, which, yeah, there could be some value there. But ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, drafting players like Perry Jones and Terrence Ferguson – uh, and a few other of their misses haven't really been what they needed to do in the 20s. And here again, you're grabbing a pick in the 20s, and he doesn't have the best history with that. So I'm, I'm kind of questioning how long the Thunder are going to be really uh, out of uh, commission, essentially, in terms of competitiveness. And Shea Gilgis-Alexander, is, you know, he's a good player at this point. And I think that they should be looking to put some other assets around him in the meantime to, you know, to help him develop during games. And at this point, I, I think they're kind of doing the opposite. They took low value on Ubre, in my opinion. They took really low value on Ricky Rubio. I mean, really, really low. I think they lost that trade for sure. And now looking at this Adams trade again, I think they took, you know, lower end value, just not terrible value. That's why I give it a C. Uh, but I think they could have done better. Where do you think that the Oklahoma City go from here, um, in your opinion? Like, not what you would do, but what do you think Sam Presti is going to do? Is he going to try to package these picks, or do you think he's just going to take these guys with each pick and, and hope he hits on a few of them? Yeah, I think, I think for the uh, short-term plan, I think he's not going to package any of these picks. I think he's going to roll probably through uh, this next season with all of these assets still. Uh, and he's going to kind of monitor what he's got. He's going to give a lot of young players chances to play in the, in the rotation. Uh, and he's going to kind of see what Shea Gill just really is as a player. He's going to put the ball in his hands a lot more offensively. Uh, and then by 2022, 2023 is kind of when he has that pivot point, whether or not he wants to start flipping some of these later picks. Uh, because at that point, he's going to kind of get to see what the outlook is for some of these teams. You know, some of those Lakers picks uh, uh, in the future could be a little bit valuable. Um, or some of the uh, other selections that they have from other teams, like the Los Angeles Clippers potentially could be, uh, depending on what Kawhi and Paul George do. So I think he, he wants to, you know, kind of see where the league is in a year or two. Uh, so for the short term, he's not moving anything, in my opinion. And then I think long term, uh, he will possibly flip some things. But I think he kind of has a, his heart set on taking uh, players with most of these selections. So don't expect him to use all 18 selections as trade chips. Yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell if you do love basketball. Also leave a like and a comment. We'd love to have dialogue in the comments section. So thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.